Hello and welcome to Career Exploration. So today we're going to be talking about professionalism, work ethics, and employability. Career exploration is simply learning about various occupations and their fit with your unique career preferences, such as skills, interests, and values that you want satisfied by your career. Ideally, you engage in career exploration during or after identifying your career preferences through self-assessment. And that is what we're going to be doing throughout this presentation and throughout this week. So first off, let's talk about STEM jobs, right? So help wanted. So what, what can you do in the STEM career fields? Well, we all know that you can get an engineering degree, four-year degree, or six-year master's degree. But what can you do with an associate's degree? So you can become an engineering technician. So engineering technicians, there's a variety of them, and they're primarily trained in the skills that are related to a specific branch of engineering with practical understanding of the relevant engineering concepts. So, so with an associate's degree, you can, you can expect salaries anywhere from 35,000 all the way up to 55,000, depending on your specialty. Here's an overview of STEM jobs, starting with engineers, averaging around $74,000 a year. And then you can go down to the average of all occupations, which is 37,000. And you can see the differences between the different types of career fields that, are, that fall underneath STEM. So you have mathematical science occupations, you have physical scientists, you have technology occupations or computer specialists, you have life scientists, you have drafters, engineering and mapping technicians, natural science technicians, and then the average for all those STEM occupations is around $64,000. So how do you get one of those jobs? How do you become an engineer or, or a technician? Well, the first thing is that you need to have a good first impression, right? So you need to have uh, a great handshake. You need to dress appropriately, right? You need to dress professionally. It shows respect. It sets the tone for productivity and it validates your level of professionalism. Dressing for success, you are dressing appropriately or one step better for the occasion. So you're professionally groomed, right? You're making sure that you have properly fitted business attire. For men, that means a shirt, suit with tie, dress shoes, and a belt. And then for women, you're looking at a business suit, dress shoes, and accessories, appropriate stockings, right? So you want to make sure that you are dressed professionally for the occasion. So you need to understand your employer's dress policy. You need to ask your human resources manager for that policy. 35% of people between the age of 25 and 35 years old have been told to dress more professionally. And if you look around, even in the current setting, can you tell who is dressed professionally and who isn't? Even within your school, can you look at the teachers and see who is dressed more professionally and who isn't? So 45% say they know someone who has been sent home for breaking dress code policy. And so if you look at even Walmart, they do have a dress code policy. You look at different restaurants, your first job, you are going to have a dress code that you are going to have to abide by. And then as you go through your education and you're ready to start your first career, then you are going to have to be dressing more professionally depending on that career. So notice what people around you are wearing, especially those in management. So you want to you want to dress for the position that you want, not for the one that you have now. OK, does that make sense? You want to leave the weekend wardrobe at home. You definitely don't want to have any ripped jeans. There's no leggings allowed. And then be aware of today's cultural norms. So what most people feel is appropriate for the workplace. You can check out more at this website. So the importance of being on time. It involves less stress. It's less stress for you and less stress for the employer. You can get to work on time being prepared for that day. It shows respect both for yourself and for your employer. It leads to greater productivity. So if you get to work on time, you can be prepared and get all that work out of the way prior to the start. 
Tardiness is given as a top reason employers fire workers. Do you believe that? I'm pretty sure that's a true statement. So developing your reputation. So you want to have a great overall quality of character. You want to have personal actions that meet high regard from others. And your personal actions are a reflection of the school, class, or company in which you are currently going, right? So if you're in school, your actions reflect on that school. If you are working for a business, your actions reflect on that business. Body language is very important, okay? It cre you create it and you are responsible for what it says about you and whom it attracts. So if you have your hands on your hips or if you have your arms crossed, your face, uh, your facial expressions, the way that you look at somebody, right? The way that you shake your head, either yes or no when they're talking, it is all body language, okay? So you need to be aware of how your body language is and what is it saying about you? Is it showing that you're angry? Is it showing that you're tense? Is it showing that you're happy? Or is it that you're, that you're relaxed? Maybe too relaxed, right? So you need to always be aware of your body language. So your body language impacts your success. It's vital that you know how to act to make the most effective and efficient use of your time and to attract those people whom you want to do business with and add to your network. So an excellent article that I want you to read is this article. Go ahead and click on that link. Go ahead and read that link and we will be having a discussion here soon. So professional handshakes. Everyone deserves to be acknowledged. A handshake is a gesture that shows a welcoming sign from you to that person. It's char characterized by a firm handshake. You get strength, vigor, duration, eye contact, and completeness of a grip, and resulting in a favorable first impression. So to do a great handshake, you're going to extend your arm with your hand outstretched with the thumb straight up. Make sure hands are web to web or palm to palm, and slide your hand into the other person's until your palms touch, and then just give two pumps. That's a great handshake. You don't want it to be too long. You don't want it to be too quick. You don't want to have too firm of a grip. and You don't have, want to have too weak of a grip, right? There is a perfect handshake. So limp, lifeless handshakes tend to communicate timidity, timidity, passivity, and intimidation. So you definitely don't want to show that off. So I want you to watch this video by Kathy McAfee on how to do a great handshake. So college and careers exploration. This is going to be your assignment for today. So you're going to be watching success in the new economy video, and then you're going to be answering the questions in Schoology. If you guys have any questions, make sure that you email me or stay on and ask those questions after our meeting today. Otherwise, you guys have a great day and I will see you later.